Welcome back, everybody! We are now at the next patch of Heaven's Ward! Oh, right! So, yeah, as I said at the end of the last episode, where we finished off the 3.0 storyline, um, for me, it's a little bit somber and bittersweet that, you know, we're... We do have some, some minor victories, and that, you know, Ishgard is part of the Alliance again, which is a good thing, but... With Nidhogg's return, well, you know, that's coming. And the fact that we're we're down three people, and we've only gained two, uh, one of our missing silence back. So, yeah, it's not really score one for Team Hero over there. And the whole plotline with uh, the Empire hasn't been resolved yet, so they're still an impending threat. But for now, we're actually back here at the Rising Stones briefly. Simply because, obviously, we have a bunch of new dialogue here that was not accessible before. What's up, man? I know you have a dialogue bubble above your head. There we go. So yeah, we have, um... Hey, excuse me, you are in Tataru's chair. Excuse me. Out. What's up, girl? Oh, okay, so that's where these random people over here who don't have name tags are. Okay. How are you? Ooh, okay, alright. Not that we've got any more leads on that, but I'm glad we're still pursuing that. Talking with some of the Doman refugees over here. Hello! Yeah, yeah it's alright. It's alright. I'm not putting any blame for you. You can see they cleaned this place up a bit, though. I mean, like, the, my planters are... Are now straight. The painting is back on the wall. Thanks for all your help, big strong dude. I bet you had a lot to do with this. That's right. You get your ass drunk. You were the only one cleaning last time over here. You, sir, deserve it. Pat on the back to you. Hey, wait, what? I'm assuming you're referring to this gentleman over here, and yeah, I would think Mr. Hori Boulder, who I kicked the crap out of, by the way, in a uh, rather amusing battle that invited quite the crowd. Uh, yeah. Well, it's okay. It's alright, dude. We'll find him, too. Homie! Homie's back, you guys! You still haven't cleaned up this table. No, really. There's still the deck of cards. There's still wine bottles everywhere. See, this is the problem with having our our headquarters right behind a bar. Yes. Old people be friends. Yeah, you're a few weeks too late, pal, but not that there wasn't that much you can do because I didn't even know they were kidnapped. For that long. Hell, I probably still won't even know for a while. Canonically. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, let us head back to where we're supposed to be. And back to, uh, our lovely manor. Which we have now made our temporary home. Even though our other home is back. But, shh, nobody cares about that. I'm getting free room and board over here in Ishgard. So, what am I to complain about? Hello, sir. Yes, please let me inside the manor. You know, I'm really a big girl. I should be allowed in there myself. Hello! Do you have any new news, sir? No, that's all you had to say. Okay, alright. Alright. Yeah, we get two other peace people on the case as well, too. So, hey, short man. What is going on? What news do you have? I just spoke to her three seconds ago. Okay, I heard an evidence told that they were they were out on the search, so yeah.
Well, how are they gonna get word that everything is okay here? I mean, it's a pretty far a place. Okay, well, well, that's a good sign. Wait, 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 wait. Hold, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Tataru, hold on. We lost contact with the students of Valdesian quite a long time ago. Island they were located on, kind of, you know, like, up and just fucking disappeared. That happened in 2.1. That was a long ass time ago, remember? Yeah, I too would like to meet them, considering I would like to know how the fuck they survived whatever disaster befell that isle. Dude, that should have been the first thing on our list, okay? Nothing's happened with our Scion friends yet, okay? They made progress, but nothing that needs our attention right now. Boss of this place is order our student's office. I think it's wise we go. Yeah, Tyler, you have a job there. God, your boss is so damn generous with, you know, you coming and going all the damn time. Hope you're getting royalties for that meal you put on the menu, by the way. Just saying. So, you know what the first thing we're gonna do is, right? Right? Oh, hey, look, there's a friend of mine. Hi, friend. Sorry, I can't wait to you on PS4 controller. Yeah, you know this is the first thing I'm gonna do. Shut up. Yeah, by the way, it's it's fun. it's nice to know that, you know, the story hasn't addressed, at least among the Scions itself, that Yastola is all hanging outside Idleshire and crap. Um, yeah, how about some acknowledgement of that? Like, I'm not gonna- I'm gonna be straight with you guys. The reason she's there is obviously what we saw in the ending cutscene that it's for the Alexander storyline. But, it's not in any way even minorly addressed or even as a side that that's why she's over there. And I- I would've honestly- like, even- even with freaking Binding Coil, there is like two different lines, uh, between like 2.1 and 2.4 that Alize is off doing primal research and stuff, so it's at least addressed what she's doing, even if they don't give you details, and I wish they did kind of the same thing with the Shola, which they don't. This isn't a fucking fairy tale after all, this is real life! Please to God, if Lucy is in this office, please have her do something. Thank you for coming. I wish to speak with you both in a place where privacy was assured. Well, we could go to the manor and just kick everyone else out. We quite understand. What was it that you wished to discuss? With my father's passing, the seat of the Archbishop lies vacant. And so, in accordance with canon law, I have assumed his responsibilities. Now, there's one minor thing that was never kind of really addressed. In that, if you remember... The last time we were pretty much, well, like, in Ishgard and stuff was happening or whatever, he was imprisoned for heresy, and the Heaven's Ward took over command of the Temple Knights. Now, obviously, they're not here anymore, either. How did all the rest of the Temple Knights, you know, the ones that weren't loyal to him and, you know, answered the call to defend them all and whatever, how did they everyone just suddenly just willingly allow him back as the commander of the Temple Knights? I mean, not that I'm really complaining, because obviously, you know, he was the previous man for the job and everything, but nobody's really fighting this. And I would think there would be some kind of turmoil regarding this, you know, all of a sudden, oh, Dad's gone, well, I can, front, you know, take back and pick my job back like nothing ever happened. I should stress that this is a temporary measure. It was never intended 
that the Lord Commander of the Temple Knights serve in this capacity indefinitely. Well, duh. Quite the opposite. The statutes specify that I should surrender my powers as soon as a conclave of the senior clergy and the high houses have named a new archbishop. So they can't really complain if they're taking their sweet ass time. But in light of recent events, that would not seem appropriate. Why? I confess I did not expect you to divulge quite so much quite so soon. The details of the Archbishop's plans, perhaps, but the true origin of the war and all it entails? That was the whole point of him blowing the whistle. We went through this. Already. This happened quite a while ago. I too had concerns. But when the Warrior of Light is witnessed returning to the capital upon the back of a dragon, one's options are rather limited. Yeah, and that was not just any dragon either, that was kind of the dragon fucking god. Yeah, you can't you can't really fight with this. I, I'm with Hemrick on that one. You, 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 you can't put a lid on that by that point. Mayhap I could have concealed certain details, but for how long? And at what risk? Should the truth have come to light in the meantime, how would the people have viewed my silence? After a thousand years of lies and secrecy, I could not well abuse their trust and hope to be believed. The time for deception has passed. And not that I disagree, but you could always claim ignorance and blame it on us because we were the ones who were there, not you, so y you could kind of squeak by on this. This is one reason, this is one thing I actually probably wouldn't mind being thrown under the bus for. Because we put you up to stand to risk by telling you all this. Lucia, would you say something, please? I only wish the people agreed. That some would deny the truth I had anticipated, but not this many. And among the few who acknowledged that my father had to be stopped, no small number questioned our methods. If they suspect a coup, it will not be long before some turn to violence. So what did we actually tell them in regards to Thornton's quote-unquote death? I never addressed that either. It has already begun, and that on both sides. Men and women of the cloth are being harassed in the streets. Some have even been assaulted in the broom. So make an executive order to make that shit illegal! Hilda and her people have formed a watch to help us maintain order. But such measures will not prevent the unrest from spreading. For all our talk of peace, the people remain frightened and confused. For their sake, we must bring the Dragon Song War to a definitive end. C kinda hard when, when the proprietor of this war is kind of still alive. Hijacking the body of your best friend. Hi, did we forget about this? And we should be glad to help you, Sir Emmerich. But what precisely would you have us do? Yeah. Yeah, like what the fuck am I here for? Do you want me to beat the crap out of a few people? I mean, I'd gladly do that, but... We wish to treat with the dragons of Annex Trine. To that end, I would trouble you for an escort and an introduction. Mm, did not see that coming. Annex Trine? You would speak with Vidofnir then? Did we actually tell them the Dothnir's name? Did, 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 I mean, I'm assuming we probably told about that part of the tale, but did we get that specific? Maybe, I don't know. We must needs open a dialogue between our peoples. Acting as my representative, Lucia will extend an invitation to their leader that she might visit us here in Ishgard. Were she still with us, I would of course have beseeched Isel's assistance in this matter. But as she is not, I must ask that you aid us in her stead. Will you do us this favor? Way to gloss over the fact that she's dead. Thanks. Thank you, my friends. Lucia, I leave the rest to you. Yes, I accept payments in cash and in dinners, please. You know, you people never feed me. I tell you, all this primal slaying and crap works up an appetite. In the wake of the Archbishop's fall, the nation of Ishgard trembled, the faith of her people shaken to its very core.
For a thousand years had they fought and died, certain of the justice of their cause, only to be told that their holy war was born of the sins of their forefathers. What then for those brave men and women, thus stripped of their righteousness but to despair, to deny the truth and decry its speakers? And what then for those whom they defamed but to hope on, to have faith in a brighter tomorrow? A tomorrow in which man and dragon might live together in harmony, then as distant as the very stars in the heavens. Yet while we dared to hope, deep within his lair the enemy lay, gathering his strength. Nidhogg, now possessed of his two eyes and the body of the Azure Dragoon, prizes to which he had laid claim at the very hour of the hero's triumph. As desperately as we sought the solace of peace, the great worm craved the misery of war. Nor was he alone in his misbegotten desire. Alright, let's get on with everything now, shall we? So yes, Lucia is now going to actually do something with us. Thank God. I wish they did stuff with more, her more often. I mean, what, what little use they do make of her is very effective, but a lot of times they just, like, have her... Like, why is she always hanging around in his office? Like, what the hell are the two of them doing in there? They need to be together in the office all the damn time. And yes, I ship it. Shut up. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Dude, can we not get a fucking new set of Link Pearls or whatever and, like, just call each other while we're on the road? I mean, she's literally right next door. I mean, I am glad he's being a total sweetheart about this whole thing and, you know, making sure Tataru's kept in the loop and all that other stuff. And I'm really glad for that. Yeah, take that armor off every once in a while. Jeez. I know you're a soldier and all that, but... I mean, look at me. I'm over here in a freaking dress. And kicking ass while I'm at it. You're always the one who does the talking. Well, it wasn't really a secret meeting. It was just a meeting. I mean, yeah, he said you wanted privacy, but Tataru didn't know that. You stole with a big girl. I'm sure she can handle it. Maybe if we, you know, again, had this new Link Pearls and whatever, yeah. Yeah, maybe we could contact each other on the road, all that lovely shmarm and whatever. Yeah. Let's do that. Why haven't we done that? Writers, why are you so lazy? This reminds you of all that crap I had when I go back to the Waking Sands to talk to him in Philly over and over again. See, 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 Alfie, Alfie agrees, okay? Yashola can take care of herself. Oh, look, it's food! Oh, you guys are the best. What should I get? Let's get some hot chocolate. There's no marshmallows in it, but... Oh, 
Well, thankfully, due to plot contrivance, we can just teleport right there. I mean, obviously, Lucia can't because she hasn't attuned the Aetherite, blah, 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 all that good luck and crap. I can also only assume that resupplying involves taking probably the necessary pee. Well, because you've been through a ton of shit ton of other stuff in the process, bro. What ended up working out well in the end? It's all right. I'm surprised he didn't once again mention the whole shit that went down with the Crystal Braves. Because while, while I am still on team, most of it wasn't his fault. And they probably would have found a way anyway. Uh, he, op he did help open the door for him. And he was blaming himself for a very long time. And, but, again, as I've said a long ass time ago, that I really wish they, they had drawn on the parallel of both him and Izel making... A huge giant error and having a quite a bit of a turnaround as a result of it uh, even though it's kind of you know classic hero redemption story now you have two people who are on opposite sides now working on the same side blah 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 main character focus all that good schmarm uh, and they really could have done something with them playing off one another and they didn't and it kind of sucks but that's neither here nor there so up through the hole in the ceiling. Hey, where are my other fr friends? Friends, where are you? Hello? I know you have to climb up the long way, but... Yeah, I never understood where they were in that scene, but whatever. Oh, Vidafnir. What's going on? Long time no see. And yes, she does know Azel's dead. They honestly should have voice acted this scene. They really should have. And also, that other guy behind us? Yeah. Yeah. Whole thing, his idea? Yeah. Credit where credit is due. Well, actually, he's in front of us, but yeah. See, I'm telling you guys, this whole thing is about friendship. I'm telling ya. Everybody makes friends with everybody. Uh, why not? If you want to say no, that's okay. I think we kind of understand. Oh, come on, Vidafnir. You're a big girl. You can make these choices on your own. Hey, 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 hey. Rorana made a deal with us. He promised. He promised. So soon, it's not, doesn't take that freaking long to fly up to the peak of Somal and call dad and be like, 
hi, yeah, humans want to make friends. This cool with you or not? And he's going to say, say, okay, or he's going to say, fuck no. It's not a difficult concept. Now your feet are clipping in the damn floor. Now, that's one thing I would find more believable if they actually, like, showed more Nath floating directly around. Like, the whole reason they actually started on this quest and grew, you know, they, they, they grew bold to, to start going after the dragons was initially it was a wounded one that fell into their territory. Like, seriously, I think you guys are a little bit more resilient than that. They keep falling on their spears and muskets, you know? Just go down there and just crunch the fuckers to death. Like, seriously, the first time we meet Rudolfnir, she's like, well, apparently proving in the process that apparently she's got terrible eyesight. You know, she spots us and is out, and she's like, oh, I thought you might be at a freaking nath. It's a good thing I, you know, I, I, I double-checked and... Otherwise, you might, you know, I might have just blared fucking fire in your face and just roasted you all to death. Why aren't you doing that to the nap? No, seriously. For real. It's cool. It's cool. Yeah, I mean, it was 20 times better than our meeting with Frasfogar. It's all right. It's all right. It's a bit of a pressing matter. I mean, it was just a simple walk over here to ask nicely. Aww. When did you come with such a sweetheart? So, just before I end this episode, um, I don't know if it's there just yet. Where is the hole in the floor? There it is. Lucia is hanging around here. There she is. Yeah. Um, this one doesn't have a dialogue box above his head, but there actually is one little side quest line over here where you do take a baby little dragon, you know, little dragonling, and, um, who is 30 years old, yeah, his mother, who is one of the dragons, uh, on the either second or top floor, I don't know, uh, she's got a bunch of eggs to guard and whatever, and she at besieges you to go teach her little dragonling how to hunt. So I'm pretty sure this is this guy right here. And he's like, yay! Hunting is cool and all that good crap. I think. I don't know. There's a bunch of little dragonlings over here. I don't know. S ignore me. Like this one over here and everything like that. There's a, there's a couple others that are involved in some side quests. But that's going to be it for this episode. So thank you for watching, my friends. And uh, we'll see what this uh, uh, scholar that we're going to meet up with in Charlayan. Hopefully we'll find out more about what the hell happened on the Isle of Val all that time ago that kind of blew up. Yeah. Yeah. Funny to be in contact with the students of Beldesian after this long. But that's the end of here nor there. Thank you for watching, friends, and I shall see you then.